The loading was a, wow, that's loud. Uh, the loading was a metaphor for what we're going to be talking about. Um, so uh, when we go around our towns, when we go around our cities, when we go around our communities, we can often get a general sense of sort of how that community's infrastructure is doing. Um, uh, for example, would you drive over this bridge? <laughs> some people are adventurous. Some people even want to break out the Jeep, uh, see how, how indestructible that, that digi tank actually is or whatever they're called. Um, but a lot of people, you'll look at the infrastructure and you'll say, hey, my city needs to do better. However, when it comes to our digital infrastructure, when it comes to sort of the websites that government agencies put together that we rely on as constituents to uh, report problems, that we rely on as constituents to understand what our town is doing, um, it's a lot harder to have a good understanding of how that digital infrastructure is faring. Um, there's a lot of invisible challenges that are often just as important. Are our government websites secure? Are they accessible? That we just don't have any good answers to. We don't know, not only can we not see how it's crumbling, but we don't even have a good sense of sort of how overall digital infrastructure is across America. And so uh, last March, we started working on a project called GovLens. It's actually gone through a few uh, name changes uh, since we launched it, but now we're at GovLens. And the idea is sort of find a new way to kind of examine America's digital infrastructure, go through and see how actually are we doing when it comes to sort of building government websites that serve all of their constituents. Uh, and really, we, we kind of look at government websites and we think there's three sort of basic principles that they should all follow. They should be secure, accessible, and trustworthy, right? Pretty basic stuff. We're not looking for flashy designs. We're not looking for great music that plays when you load up that website. Secure and accessible and trustworthy, which we think are a pretty good starting point um, for government websites to have. Now, why does this stuff matter, right? <laughs> Why does it matter how good our government websites are, right? Some government websites are really great. Some government websites look like they were developed in 1995 and haven't been updated since. Um, is that really a problem if, if government websites aren't good? Absolutely. Um, lack of HTTPS security, for example, means that uh, if you report a problem to a government, if you report an issue to a government agency, people can intercept that information. Uh, if they're not properly signing their content, uh, through HTTPS, somebody can go in and, and sort of surreptitiously modify that content so that you're reading sort of misleading information, right? And I think as we get be more skeptical and as we're worried about sort of foreign interference or even domestic interference in our elections, being able to sort of trust this information is really, really important. It also comes down to some privacy issues, right? Uh, right now, we're, we're increasingly concerned about sort of all these third-party trackers uh, throughout the web and how they're looking at us. Um, but a lot of government agencies, they don't really have the technical understanding to sort of say, oh, this, this little doodad on our website, it actually means we're selling out all of our constituents' privacy. They don't necessarily understand these issues. And so we want to have a better sense of sort of how this is looking. Um, and then slow, non-mobile friendly sites can cut constituents out of access completely. So we built a website that goes through and actually goes through every single government agency website we can get our hands on and checks for these these criteria. Uh, we're launching with just looking at HTTPS publicly, but we're starting to track other data points as well. We think HTTPS is a very critical one. It's very easy to test against. And so what we want to do is sort of break down this key issue and help constituents uh, and help government agencies understand it better. Um, and so this is what the website's going to look like. It hasn't launched publicly yet as we do some sort of last minute double checks on our data. Um, but we're really excited about the concept. And for the first time ever, we've been able to actually check and get an answer to how good is America's infrastructure? How good are government agency websites when it comes to using these basic security protocols? Turns out 88% of government agency websites that we've tracked so far have HTTP, HTTPS properly enabled. Uh, that's a little bit better than we, we were concerned it might be, uh, but it still is a, a ways to go. Um, our basic process is a five-step process. First, we scrape thousands of government websites once a week we only look at the home page because we don't want to accidentally take down a government agency website while we're examining it. We then store all of that data in a Django backend so that we can kind of keep both the present data as well as historical data so we can get and see long-term trends in terms of whether these issues are improving. We have automated analysis checks that, again, look through HTTPS, see if it's properly enabled, and we're adding other checks in the future. We publish that data. We build a report card for every single government agency in our database. Um, plus, we also allow API access, so researchers and other people who want to get the big picture have tools that they can look at that big picture view of how America's infrastructure is doing, and then we repeat. 
So we run these checks once a week, we keep all that data, and we really want to make this a foundation for making sure that we are pushing government agencies' websites to improve their digital best practices. Uh, early results have been really interesting. So 88% are using HTTPS. Everybody say, yay! yay. Uh, that's really fantastic. 78% of police departments using HTTPS. I thought it was going to be way lower. Let's say, yay! yay. Uh, only 63% of schools use HTTPS. Let's all say boo. boo. Right, so that was really distressing to see that schools, which actually have a lot of special privacy and educational protections around them, are some of the worst offenders when it comes to securing their websites. But then, the really exciting stat. Boston, 95% of Boston agencies use HTTPS. Yay! Um, and before we started run these scrapers, nobody had really good sense of sort of how well government agency websites were doing in general. And so we're really excited to have this data. And so far, we've only analyzed 462. Uh, later this week, we're hoping to uh, ramp that up to 4,000. And then early on in the new year, we're hoping, hoping to scan about 16,000 different agencies once a week. And we're super, super excited uh, about these early results. Um, so yeah, that's GovLens. Uh, we're using Django, beautiful soup, and a service called Lighthouse is some of our core infrastructure. Um, but yeah, check us out, github.com slash codeforboston slash govlens. Scrolls up the top. Anyways, uh, and also I just want to give a quick shout out to our amazing team members behind us. Some of them are here, if you can raise their hands real quick. Awesome. Um, it's been amazing seeing the team develop over the past few months. So, uh, questions about the project? I answered everything. Fantastic. Oh. So do you have any hypotheses or ideas of why schools are, are coming short with their HTTPS? Have you found any patterns or things like that? Yeah, so I think that's a really good question. So I think one of the things is what we found is that a lot of times agencies are centralizing more and more of their IT services, more of their web design services to like a state agency or sort of centralizing that and that's actually helping push best practices. A lot of schools are still independently building their websites or it's just something that they haven't uh, prioritized and budgeted for. Yeah. Um, have you tried to do or uh, build a, a sort of uh, point system for analyzing how good user experiences are um, with these websites in yeah. terms of accessibility? So one of the things we're really, really interested in doing is accessibility scores. Lighthouse, which is an API we're using for some of the scanning tools, has a built-in accessibility score, but that's also something that's really tricky to do automated. And so we're, we're kind of being careful and, and slow about how to approach that, but that's one of our big, big uh, focuses in 2020, is sort of really pushing agencies to become more accessible. Uh, yeah, question right there. So the question was, and I apologize for the live stream, uh, I've not been repeating the question. The question was, what counts as a government website? Uh, we're using the homepage for each independent government agency. And we only look at the homepage, again, we don't want to accidentally take out a website. Uh, we've done that with other projects in the past and people weren't too happy with it. Um, and so, uh, but any in independent government agency, so like City Hall would be one, the Boston Police Department would be another, Sanitation Department might be another, um, and we'll each check one of those websites. Okay, uh, question back here. Yeah, so it looks like you have some really great metrics. Um, who are you hoping those metrics will um, sort of get to, to get to action? Would it be citizens going to elected officials, or would you be looking to put those metrics back to the agencies themselves so they can correct? Like, who, who is this for? Great question. Yeah, so the question was, who are, the, who are these statistics for? Who are these report cards for? Uh, so we've done, um, and we have a little bit more detailed information on our GitHub, but we decided we have sort of three core audiences for this website. The first is government decision makers, right? Because if a government official doesn't know why HTTPS matters, they're not gonna prioritize it, right? And if we just go up to a government agency and we're like, ah, HTTPS is good, get more cyber, um, they'll be like, <laughs> they've got a lot of other things we ask them to do. And so what we really want to do is help break this down and sort of help them understand what's the impact. So government decision makers is the first case, and we're building out some sort of collateral and extra materials for them. Uh, active and engaged citizens, right? Because if, if people who are constituents of a government uh, agency aren't telling them to do it, like that's, that's how you get things done, is you get citizens who are engaged or, or residents who are engaged, get them to kind of lobby for changes. And then third is sort of the press, and so helping